Yeah, okay, let me, let me think here. Um, no, I'll sing uh, the, did I, the Doctor and I. You know that one? Oh, someone said no. Piss off. It's my show. I'll sing what I like. Um, when I meet the Doctor, when I prove my worth, and when I meet the Doctor, what I've waited for since, since birth, and with all his Doctor wisdom, by my looks he won't be blinded. Do you think the Doctor is dumb? Or like, ooh, he's so small-minded, no. You say to me, I see who you truly are, Jack, a man on whom I can rely. And that's how we'll begin, the Doctor and I. There you go. That was, uh, obviously that was from the musical Wicked, but Stephen Schwartz and I together changed the lyrics because I wanted to do a song that I thought felt that how Jack felt about the Doctor, and he let me change the lyrics with him, and because I used to listen to Wicked on my way home from Cardiff to London after filming Doctor Who, because I'm a musical theater boy. <laughs> yes! Hi, I'm Jeremy from Melbourne. Hello, Jeremy from Melbourne! I wanted to know whatever happened to the Tim Tams in your Tim Tam Tower, and what was your favorite play? My favorite flavor is salt caramel. My dad, my dad's favorite flavor is white chocolate. Scott's favorite flavor is any Tim Tam. And all of those Tim Tams, apart from the tower, because everybody who played the, uh, we played Tim Tam Jenga. Did you all see that? It was awesome. And it was like, you know, a thousand people stayed to play Tim Tam Jenga. I gave a lot of those Tim Tams to other people. And the rest, I kid you not, I took two suitcases full of Tim Tams home. I walked through customs, I felt like a Tim Tam drug addict. And Scott, Kelsey had left, she went ahead because Scott got stopped in customs. I'm like, oh my god, He's, they're going to be searching him. And he was like against the wall going, this is fabulous, I love this. Search me, search me. Did you know you talk that way, honey? <laughs> So, I'm walking through with two suitcases thinking, I've got to, I, actually, I am sweating. Because I don't know if you can bring all that food in to the U.S. Turns out California, they don't care. But me, I was drenched because I am, I'm smuggling in two suitcases of Tim Tams. I get them back, I put them in the, the pantry, they're all up on the top shelf in the pantry. I go to buy dryer sheets, you know, bounce gentle and clear. I go to buy it at uh, Target, and what do I see? Freaking Tim Tams. I didn't need to bring them all back. No. They sell them at Target. I found that out too, but I ate two flavors. Really? What flavors? Chocolate and caramel. Oh, well, they're, they're the crap ones. That's why they sell them at Target. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. How you doing, John? I'm good. So, we're back here again from Snow Apocalypse in January. Yes, we are. We're here celebrating my wife Amanda's birthday. Happy birthday, Amanda. Yes? So, my son's a huge Doctor Who fan. Good. He... Why aren't you? Actually, I am. Good. But my particular universe is we changed your t shirt from your Star Wars t shirt you had on earlier. I know it's called copyright issues because I'm being filmed. Bastards. Because George Lucas is really expensive. Uh, Mickey Mouse now. Yeah, I know, it's Disney, but they are even more expensive because they have to pay George Lucas. <laughs> so, for my son, who was... Oh, I have a, wait, before, before you go on, I have a George Lucas story. I was in Cannes at the Cannes Film Festival, and I'm standing with uh, Natalie Cole and a couple other people, and George Lucas is across the other side of the room because I've been asked to come to Cannes to sing because I was in the movie with uh, Kevin Klein called, uh, it was a Cole Porter biopic and I had to sing a lot of Cole Porter stuff. So they asked me to sing on this stage in Cannes, but I'm at this party celebrating the movie and all of George Lucas is over there and I am a huge Star Wars freak. I still have the bedding I had when I was eight years old. Could you not? If you look online, you can see the pillow. I travel with it. It's got my Star Wars pillowcase. My, my great nephew, now Claire's, my niece's son, has the curtains that we've had to cut because they were so frayed. He now has short curtains, the same curtain. So I'm a huge nerd, right? George Lucas, 
I, again, clap myself because he's over there. And Natalie calls, go, go talk to him, go talk to him. I'm like, no, I can't go talk to him. She's like, go talk to him. Okay. Walk over. And I go, <laughs> Mr. Lucas, <laughs> Star Wars, Chewbacca, R2-D2, C-3PO, boom, 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 boom. Natalie Cole goes, what did you say? I went, absolutely shit. I said nothing. And she said, go back and talk to me. I said, I can't. I just told, I went up there and I went, Star Wars, what you did, you see that? You old Chewbacca. She said, you did not. I went, yes, I did. She said, go back and talk to him. I said, okay, I gotta go apologize. I walk over. I said, Mr. Lucas, he went, don't. I get it all the time. I'm totally used to it. I understand. You love the show. Have a great time. I'm like, oh, thank you! Force me with you. So, uh, Dr. Who question. Uh, which episode of Dr. Who you were in that kind of freaks you out the most? The, the episode that freaks me out the most is uh, the one with Davros. Davros, if you all know, who's half Dalek, half alien, and he was one of the uh, aliens that freaked me out as a kid, but when I was doing Doctor Who, I was so glad that I had to uh, spend time with Davros. I'd love to play Davros. I'd love to be covered in that mask and sitting in that half Dalek. Sometimes I take the hat off the Dalek I have in our living room and I do it anyway. Right, Scott? Yeah. He wakes up some morning and he's like, Jesus! Get out of that thing! The other afternoon I was doing a photo, photo shoot and I, the guy said, What's that robot over there? I went, That robot is a Dalek! He said, oh, I don't know what that is. So he went, do you mind if I use your bathroom? And I'm like, okay. He went into the bathroom. What did I do? I got in the dog. <laughs> put, I said, Scott, put all the coverings on. And I'm sitting there, and I'm one of those people, I'll wait for hours for the right moment. Because this guy came and he's doing a photo shoot about my favorite things in my house, right? And, and, and Scott's like, and this is one of his favorite things, and this is one of my favorite things. And I'm sitting there going, Get to the Dalek. Get to the Dalek. Because I've got the voice control and everything inside. And then I've got, because I had it all. Listen, I'm John Barrow and Captain Jack Hart because my Dalek does everything. It even, it even says, nice ass. <laughs> so I'm sitting waiting and waiting. And he's like, do you think you'd mind if we take a picture of the robot? This is like an hour later. I'm sweating inside the Dalek. It's 122 degrees in Palm Springs. But I'm waiting because he called it a robot. <laughs> so I turn on the voice thing and I have it on. And he comes over and he's going, ch -ch 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 -ch. and he says, What show is this from? And I go, I am not a robot. And I started moving. He's like, ah! Crapped all over my tile floor. It was horrible. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Good Happy day, birthday, sir. Amanda. Yes. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. Fine, sir, in the Captain America outfit. Well, you just mentioned how easy it was for you when you played Malcolm Merlin. I'm just curious what you used for motivation in those scenes where Malcolm really ups like his vengeance and his seething rage, and it's more than just like the asshole dark humor spot. There are scenes where it's like you're almost ready to jump off the screen. You're so angry and vengeful. What do I do? I'm just wondering what your motivation is as an actor, because you're such a good-natured, fun guy, but there are scenes where Malcolm's just like, holy shit. So. I, I, you know, I have to be honest with you, I don't get that deep with it. I just kind of find the situation around me and I get angry. I listen to the words, I listen to the other actor. It always helps, like, putting thumbtacks in your feet. <laughs> Two people got that. So you're walking around, ah! <laughs> That's how I do it. 
Yeah? Don't tell anybody my method. Because I beg you. Because when I know someone else wants to get angry, I put thumbtacks in their feet. Lula has no idea. She's got like 20 thumbtacks stuck in her foot. She's like, I don't know why I'm so angry! It definitely explains some of your father daughter stuff. There you go, yes. And that's exactly why, because I am your father. Yes. Okay, first you're awesome. Hello, Retro. How are you, Retro Flash? I love you. Good, how are you? Good. You're awesome. Thank you. Second, uh, I know you're, you're great as Malcolm Merlin. You're great as Jack Harkin. I know I'm great as Malcolm Merlin. <laughs> I'm also great as Captain Jack Harkin. Yes. But if you had to play any other role, what would it be? If I had to play any other role? Yes, like any established character. Say that last part again. Any established character. On any on any other established character, if I could play a character. How long is this question? So, if I could play any other established character, who would it be? Yes. Hmm. Captain America. I just like him. Or, with all the controversy that was going on, Captain America's boyfriend. Let's, you know, take a risk, uh, superhero comic book writers. Oh, here she comes. Th Thumbtacks in her feet. Don't tell them about when you put thumbtacks in your feet to make you angry. What? Emotional now, my kids are here. I've killed one and I beat the other. What to do with dad? I know you're just standing there. No, um, they were asking questions about how I get mean, and I said I put thumbtacks in my feet and just walk on them. And I said, when Willa has to be mean, she's like, I don't know why I'm being so mean because she's got thumbtacks in her feet. I don't tell them I put them in your shoes. How's it going? It's going great. Yeah. I'm happy to see you. We have photo ops together, don't we? Isn't he handsome? 